Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to be discussing the difference and between LDPE and HDPE or low density and high density polyethylene. As the name suggests the, the difference between these two structures comes down to their density and the way that the polymer chains are produced and the way that they're kind of packed together and that this has an impact on the kinds of properties that these two um, polymers have. Okay, so <clears throat> you would remember in the previous video we looked at the concepts of initiation, propagation and termination as the three main steps involved in the formation of a, a polymer like polyethylene. So where we take a, uh, a um, so taking a, um, something that, that forms a radical to help initiate the process and then it continues to propagate and then eventually then the process gets terminated. Now, <clears throat> the difference in this first step is what um, serves to, to cause a difference between these two polymers. So when we, oh, we'll talk about LDPE first. Now, the steps that we've talked about in the previous video actually are, are largely applying to LDPE and not HDPE. So we have a benzoyl um, peroxide radical. Um, so where it splits, that is definitely a hexagon, believe me when I tell you that. Okay, and so where that bond splits, leaving us with unpaired electrons. Now I'm just going to simplify that to say that this is an R group, and that's an that, and then it looks like this. Okay, so two uh, radicals with unpaired electrons. And then what happens is that this attacks a um, an ethylene, causing this double bond to break, leaving the unpaired electron, which then can attack the next one, causing it to break and so on and so on. And so then what we end up getting, we get, as the chain grows in length, and just at this at this point, um, we'll get you to imagine that the hydrogens are there because this has mostly to do with the way, what happens to the structure as it grows longer and longer. So what happens is that the chain itself grows in length and then it starts actually to curl around on itself like this, a bit like a kind of like a, a scorpion's tail or kind of a caterpillar kind of going back this way. And so what happens is that if we kind of trace it back over here, we've got an unpaired electron over here and we've got a hydrogen atom here. And so then what, what occurs is that this um, unpaired electron attacks this hydrogen and moves it across so that this hydrogen actually exists here now and now this is our unpaired electron. And so what then happens is that then this process can actually start to form its own chain going off in this direction. So what we get is called branching. Okay, now we've looked at branching in polymers and things before and we're thinking about carbohydrates and, and so on. But what that, that then means is that then the, our LDPE structure kind of ends up with this um, lots of big kind of gaps and spaces between uh, between chains. Okay, so we got so that you're getting these these chains and that they don't pack very tightly or closely to, together, and so we end up with a low density. Okay, and so then that's going to influence some of the properties that it has. That it's very um, it's very light, um, it's very stretchy. It's used for things like cling wrap and plastic bags, um, and because it, it doesn't have a lot of structure, it's not very rigid or very tough, um, and so you know. If you've ever tried to, you know, hold on to a very heavy shopping bag, you can see that, that these sorts of materials break. But they're really nice and light and thin and can be stretched into very thin films that are perfect for those purposes. Okay, but so now let's have a quick look at um, when we're talking about HDPE. Okay, actually, well, let's, let's just kind of summarize some of those ideas over here first. So we've got the benzoyl peroxide as our radical to start off our process. And then what we use is we, we have very high pressures. So around about 2,000 times atmospheric pressure and high temperatures. So around about 200 Celsius. Okay, now let's have a look at 
H D D P E. Okay, so what we use is something called a Ziegler Natter catalyst. So a different kind of catalyst, so, so a different process involving a catalyst rather than a radical to start off or initiate the process. So um, an example of a, of a Ziegler Natter Natter catalyst is um, titanium for chloride. It's not the only example, but it's a nice straightforward one to um, to start with. And so what happens, and then you have this structure of TiCl4 kind of connecting together. And what happens is that this serves as an active site for our, um, for our alkene to attach. And then forming the radical, which then can interact with more alkene more alkenes and so on okay so it serves so that the we're getting this what's called an active site okay so the technique here is is um, quite different but what we end up with is much less branching because of the nature of the way that these are connecting together that you don't get that same kind of curling back on itself phenomenon which is called technically called backbiting Okay, so you get less branching, and what that means is that leads to a high density. Okay, because the chains can pack much more tightly towards one another. They don't necessarily line up in a linear fashion, um, like they might in, say, cellulose, but that the pack, that they're much more closely packed together, so it is much more rigid, and it's much more capable of, um, you know, for, for things like wheelie bins or, or um, otherwise... Um, yeah, things that, that need to be quite tough um, and have a lot, a bit more strength and a bit more structure to them than your average, say, you know, plastic shopping bag. And so when we're talking about um, HDPE, okay, so we're using our Ziegler Natter, Ziegler Natter catalyst. So that's Z I E G L E R N A W T A. Just because I realised that my handwriting's not always easy to read on on this format. Okay, so we're using a lower pressure because we don't need it in order for those components to react together this time, and then low temperature as well, or lower, around about 100 degrees Celsius. So the different technique leads to a different um, molecular structure, which leads to different uses. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.